We're concluding our series on the wise men today, on the Magi, and by now you should be experts. Uh, we, we've taken this passage and we've read through it, and every week we add a verse to it to, to take one more look into the lessons that we learned from the wise. We're in Matthew chapter 2, and it says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose. We have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. And then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. In our lives, lots of things do not go according to our plan. Sometimes it's just a timing thing. We're late or someone else is. Sometimes something we hoped for just doesn't seem to happen, or something we feared does happen. Our schedule winds up getting interrupted, our agenda gets hijacked, and such moments usually cause emotions like frustration or disappointment. But it reminds us how little control we actually have in this world. The Christmas story is very helpful to us because it's filled full of unplanned things and things that don't happen according to plan. Mary was in wedding planning mode when she was given the opportunity and invited by God to participate in something that would help bring light and life to all the world. And she said yes, but that wasn't what she was originally planning. Joseph, when he found out that Mary was pregnant, intended to divorce her, but an angelic visit in a dream changed his mind and he changed his plans. Or the Magi, when we look at this passage, the last verse that we read said that they were planning to go home the same route that they had come, but an angel warned them in a dream and they had to go a different route. Um, in this life, you are going to be interrupted by people. Uh, they're going to intersect your life in ways that change your schedule or at least delay it. And not just people, we're interrupted by events. Uh, my wife and I, uh, a couple months ago, we were flying to a conference in San Antonio, Texas for a couple of days and our flight out of Rochester got delayed because of a mechanical failure. And so while we were sitting there waiting, we got to see Kareem Abdul-Jabbar who came to Rochester. I don't know why he came to Rochester, but he did. And then we got, finally got on our flight, and our, our connecting flight was in Chicago, which we missed. We had to spend the night in Chicago, and the next day we spent most of the day in two airports. And our, that event just completely disrupted our schedule. But you should know that you will not only be interrupted by people and by events, you will be interrupted by God. See, it's, God is not just a feeling in our heart or a thought in our mind. God is not uninterested or uninvolved in our world or our lives. He doesn't come to threaten, he doesn't come to demand, but he does come to invite and it will always feel like an interruption because not one of us in our calendars or calendar apps have scheduled a God moment into our day. And so the way they happen is he interrupts us. If you're going to take your faith journey seriously, 
You're going to have moments in your life when you get to choose whether you are going to follow and respond to an interruption that God is providing or whether you're going to stick with your plan. And if you want a God who's a silent observer, who just kind of keeps his distance and doesn't involve himself in our lives or our world, you're really going to have to pick another religion because it's not how God is. He desires to walk with us. He desires to lead and guide us. And like I said, it's not on our calendar, but it is on his. And so the question is, what are we going to do with that? I think there's a key uh, point to make here, and that is that worship can awaken the awareness of God's direction in our life. When you look at the Magi, all of the decisions have been based on basically two factors. One was they were intensely curious people. They, they wanted to find things out. And the second was is they sought expert advice. And their curiosity and, and expert information kind of helped them get to the point where they are in the story where they see the Christ child and they present their gifts and they bow down and worship. But something happens after that. And that is that they are warned in a dream not to go back the same way. Now, a, a dream is, is not just a curious thing or an expert advice thing. It's very different. And this wasn't the first time they'd ever had a dream, but something happened. This dream was different than other dreams. If I asked you how many of you dream, lots of you would say you don't. They tell me, the experts say, everybody dreams, we just don't remember our dreams. But I'm wondering, what kind of a dream would it take for you to actually change your travel plans? How significant a dream would that have to be? Well, that's what's happening to the wise men. Something else has occurred. In their engagement in worship of the Christ child, something is awakened within them. And now they're receiving information a little bit different way than they have known before. So, um, I think that I, I would like to be able to tell you that... Uh, uh, God only uses stars and angels to let us know what he wants to do. The simple truth is, is that he has a lot of other options available to him. And I want us to be aware of those options uh, coming through this Christmas season. So these divine interruptions can be a prompting to act. It's an idea that comes to your mind about an action that you could take. And the truth is, is that our actions actually make a difference um, and our actions animate our faith. James would say it this way. He would say that without works, without action, our faith dies. It can't survive. It requires something from us. So there's these thoughts to actually take action. Or sometimes it's a motivation to learn. See, God is intensely interested in us continuing to grow and to develop and to mature and to experience the kind of flourishing life that he intended for us. So there are things that we can learn. There are new approaches to life. There, there are new patterns to learn so that things just tend to work better. That desire to learn is actually a God thing. Or it can be a reminder to speak, to speak up. It could be a, something as simple as a prayer or a word of encouragement or a word of comfort to someone. It'll come to our minds, just those, those moments where... I could say, or I could do, or I could learn. It's what we do with those thoughts that make the difference. So why does God want to interrupt our lives? Why does he interject himself into our thoughts? And by the way, not every thought you have will be a God thought. How many already knew that? How many have met some people that haven't learned that truth yet? <laughs> And uh, so you can inform them. Pastor Bob says, not every thought you have is a God thought. Um, the reason is because there are things we don't know. We're not all knowing. There are lots of things that are happening in the lives of people around us that we don't have any idea what's going on. We can't tell by looking on the outside what's going on on the inside. There are people in this room this morning, you look very well put together but inside things are falling apart and you don't know how much longer you can go. And God has a way sometimes of just interrupting someone to come alongside with a word of encouragement or just a little bit of support and that can make all the difference. There are also things that we don't see. Um, if oblivion were a superpower, I would have an O on my chest. My wife will tell you this. It's amazing, but like, I, I was out at Eastview Mall yesterday with every other person in the city of Rochester. I, 
When I got home, I said, you were the only one that wasn't there. Everybody else was there. And, uh, but it's possible that you were there, and I walked right by you and didn't notice you. And that, that's because I have this superpower of oblivion. We have blind spots in our lives. There are things that escape our notice because we're distracted. We're focused on something else. And there are things that we don't hear. Sometimes when people are telling us something, there's just this little sense of doubt in their voice or a worry in their sigh or fear in their question or desperation in a cry or a plea for help. And it is amazing how tone deaf we can be to that. They think they're making it clear. We just don't catch it. And then there are things that we don't feel. We can become numb to lots of things in life. Sometimes just our, our fatigue can do that to us. But sometimes just going through the same motions over and over and over again, we, we just kind of, we become a little bit more numb in life. And without God's interruptions in our life, we kind of go through with this inability to know and to see and to hear and to feel. It, it really is a kind of handicap. And God comes to relieve us and release us from that. So how do we take advantage, and what's the benefit of these divine interruptions? Well, you're going to need a servant's heart. In fact, this is a great test to see if a thought is a God thought or your thought. Because God will often come to you with the opportunity to help someone else. But a lot of our thoughts are about how someone else can help us. If your thought is, if they would just do that, it would make my life easier, that's probably not a God thought. If I would just do this and it might help them, that could be a God thought. So it's kind of a litmus test. Um, let's, let's start with the idea that when God speaks to us, it'll be an opportunity to serve someone else. And then it's going to take time. And uh, it takes time to hear the voice of God. It takes time to respond to the voice of God in our lives. And if you're too busy to listen and you're too busy to respond, then you're just too busy. And here's the funny thing. None of us can add any time to our day. Yesterday, I wanted about two more hours. In fact, I wanted another two days in this week. And uh, I've told God, I don't need to be omnipresent, just dual present. If I could be two places at the same time, that would be a really cool thing. And, and I, I also think that if I were, I would just be twice as tired as I already am. It takes time. We can't add hours to our day, but we can prioritize. And here's the secret. Not everything is of the same importance in our life. Picking up the mail is not as important as taking time with a friend. Having a cup of coffee is not as important as following through on one of those promptings that God gives us. And so we can't create more time, but we can discern and decide. That's a really big deal. And then act courageously. It just takes courage. Uh, if you're going to follow through on something, we're so afraid of what people are going to think of us. And what I can tell you is that's the greatest weakness that we have in following through on the promptings of God. It's not that the thought didn't come. It's that we're worried what people will think of us. And here's what you should know. Self-consciousness is the enemy of God consciousness. The more we're focused on self, the less we can hear God. And if we don't hear him, we're going to miss out on opportunities to make significant investments in the lives of others. We have to choose investments or impressions. If we're worried about impressing people, we're going to miss out on a lot of things. Now, I don't actually think that God is going to come and ask you to bear a child for him. So you're off the hook on that one. He's probably not going to ask you to take a two-year journey to find a baby in a manger either. But he might ask you to do some things. Could wind up taking a fair amount of time and energy. Like maybe the thought will come to you this holy season that an investment in your marriage could make a big difference. That'll take some time. And some courage, by the way. Or spending more time with your children. And I know, your, your children are out of the room, so I can say this. Some of you are thinking, more time with my children, I will go certifiably insane. <laughs> that, that is not good. And I do not think that an insane parent is a good thing for a child. But 
Sometimes we just miss real opportunities because we don't have the time. Or maybe a way to serve others is by volunteering. Opportunities both within and without the church for that, to use our gifts. Maybe there's someone, as you head into this Christmas season, there's been a lot of distance between you and them. In fact, maybe not a single conversation for a long, long time. And the opportunity just to reconnect, to reconcile, to open the door or at least knock on it to see if they're willing to open it too. Maybe you're struggling with some kind of life-controlling behavior and it's going to take some time and energy. And maybe that's God's prompting to you. That if you start addressing that, now the trajectory of your life can look far different than it does today. Or something as simple as calling a person's name in prayer. It's amazing how often a thought will come to us, I should pray for someone. And then we think, yeah, I should do that instead of doing it. Those prayers don't have to be long to be powerful. They can make an incredible difference. Now, I know this is an insanely busy time of year. It actually was for everyone in the Christmas story. Their lives were upended in every way you could possibly imagine. But some of the most significant things God has ever done in our world occurred, and we're still talking about it two millennium later. Shepherds and wise men, a newly engaged couple, kings, priests, teachers of the law. Everyone had an opportunity, and some of them actually took it. And if they were here today, they would still tell their story. It made all the difference. Let's bow our heads this morning. Uh, Father, our lives are just so full, and mostly of really good things. We're so grateful for that. If we started a list today of all the things to be thankful for, well, we probably wouldn't live long enough to complete it. And for some of us in the room, uh, our life is filled with things that take a lot out of us. And um, it makes us weary, sometimes sad. And so, in all of this fullness and chaos, we want you to speak to us we don't want to miss out on those directions, those promptings, those ideas that you have that can make all the difference in our lives and in our world. So would you whisper to us? We give you permission. Call us to serve an opportunity. Encourage us to speak up and speak out. To help lift someone else up. Help us to be willing to let go of something from our hands into someone else's just so that they get a little taste of what grace is like. It's so rare in our world, but it doesn't need to be. Speak to us. We are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand together.